and welcome to another rapid revision session. Um, I'm Mrs Burt and I'm going to be taking you through this session on James Simpson and anaesthetics. So we are going to be having a look at Simpson's discovery. We are going to be having a look at chloroform and the factors that helped and hindered its acceptance. Um, and we are going to be having a look at the significance of Simpson's work. So here's some key information about James Simpson. He's a young surgeon, he's a professor of midwifery at Edinburgh University, so that's concerned with women giving birth. He wanted to reduce pain in childbirth, um, and he was convinced that there had to be a better anaesthetic than what was on offer at the time. However, he was working at a time where many people believed that pain in childbirth was acceptable, that it was a punishment for women because Eve had stolen the apple from the tree in the Garden of Eden. He discovered that chloroform made an excellent anaesthetic, and he did this by inviting several of his colleagues to his home to experiment. They decided to breathe in the vapours of different chemicals to see what worked. And after sniffing chloroform, the whole group found themselves on the floor, they woke up, they realised they couldn't remember anything that had happened, and so he discovered chloroform. So he started using it to help relieve women's labour pains during childbirth, and he wrote articles about his discovery. But not everyone thought that he had a good idea. There was lots of opposition to anaesthetics from surgeons and wider society. And it took about a decade for his ideas to finally be accepted. So, chloroform and factors that helped or hindered acceptance. So, not everyone was keen to use chloroform, like I said, many surgeons and the wider society opposed it. So, why did people oppose or disagree with the use of chloroform? So, it was new. James Simpson discovered it and it was an untested gas. Some people feared that there might be some long-term side effects. It was difficult to correct, uh, calculate the correct dose of chloroform and unfortunately in 1848, Hannah Greener, who was having an ingrown toenail removed, she died from chloroform in an operation so she never came round, she um, did not recover and that put a lot of people off, it scared people and surgeons in particular. Chloroform made complex operations possible deep in the body. So anaesthetics knock people out. So at this point, the patient is not awake, they're not aware, they can't feel what's going on. But that does lead to other issues. Because there are no antiseptics, so an antiseptic is something that would keep a wound clean, there is a risk of infection. So when surgeons were carrying out operations with anaesthetics, with chloroform, people got um, very poorly and death rates increased. People died on the operating table and so surgeons stopped using it. And many people, like I said, believe that pain was part of God's plan. They felt that it should be especially in childbirth and it was meant to be painful. So how did attitudes change then? Why did people start to accept the use of chloroform? So in 1853, Queen Victoria used chloroform during the birth of her son, Prince Leopold, and she spoke very favourably of it. She's an influencer, if you will, and people would look up to her um, and they would want to be like the Queen. They would think that that was a good thing to do and it becomes popular. James Simpson also advocates for his discovery. He delivers powerful speeches, he argues for the use of chloroform, and he says what a fantastic anaesthetic it is. In the 1930s, Helmut Vess developed an anaesthetic which could be injected, and that enabled a precise dose to be given. Don't forget that one of the things that we saw as an issue is that they are unable to calculate the correct dose. But because now we can work out exactly what should be injected, this makes it much more acceptable. And in the long term, anaesthetics were developed with fewer side effects. So now we have local anaesthetics. So if you ever go to the dentist, 
you know that you'll have an anaesthetic just in the area that you would need and it can numb one area of the body without putting the patient to sleep and that makes it much more accepted. So why is James Simpson important? He is able to replace ether, which is very unpleasant. Um, it irritates the air passages and it seems to be quite hard to administer, to give. Simpson's work made painless operations possible. It became the favourite anaesthetic of most surgeons in England. There are limitations. It took about a decade for this anaesthetic to be accepted. He didn't develop the equipment necessary to administer chloroform. John Snow did this. Okay, now we have listened to the information about James Simpson. So here's some tasks that you might want to do. So there's a rapid revision multiple choice quiz on Teams, on um, forms for you. You can consolidate this content by making a spidergram of your own showing Simpson's work. And you can apply this content to a longer answer. So how important was Simpson's work on anaesthetics? How significant? Give some specific examples and show some balance, significance and limitations. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to check out the other rapid revision videos that are on the History YouTube channel.